That's right. Really looking forward to this uh, conversation. And the company just completed its SPAC merger last week and is now trading under the ticker NKLR to discuss the clean energy industry and Terra Innovatum's role in the industry. Very pleased to say I am joined on the floor by Alessandro Petrucci, who's the co-founder and CEO, and Giordano Maricci, who's the partner, chief business development officer and investor relations at the company. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me here on the floor. It's a very exciting time for you. So I'll just start off with you, Alessandro, obviously because you co-founded the company. Just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. When we started in 2018, for us it was very important to try to develop a design of a nuclear reactor which can give uh, the high priority to the safe, but more than this, to ensure the public opinion about the safety aspect of nuclear. Everybody knows about <laughs> nuclear yeah. accident, right? So our goal was to try to design a reactor which cannot melt, which cannot explode at the same time can be producing in a factory decreasing down the cost of production and limiting shorting the time of uh, of production itself what we try to do basically is to uh, uh, reduce the mismatch about the timeline from the investor side mm -hmm. respect to the construction and operation of the right uh, reactor in particular looking through the licensing aspects Okay, yes, I'm interested to know about sort of that shift in mind, uh, sort of mindset towards nuclear. Obviously, it's amazing what Silicon Valley has been able to do in the industry. So just on that, I'm just wondering, you know, as far as going public virus back on the NASDAQ, why now exactly? Definitely, we've seen uh, an increased amount of technology deployment toward the AI, right? The mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, which has been kind of propelling the whole nuclear sector. Uh, all of the energy, uh, all of the energies are very important throughout uh, to get to net zero and so forth. But really, nuclear is the one that will be able to provide the basal power uh, to serve those needs for the communities, for the world, uh, based on our technology needs uh, as of today. Uh, so definitely the markets responded really well for the past uh, year or so uh, and we've seen it not only in, in the in the SPAC opportunities, the people that actually went through the IPOs, but we were in a moment of an IPO freeze and so we decided to really choose the SPAC as a way to propel the technology deployment because our technology is ready. It was a way to finance the whole operation and we actually succeeded at it, right? We raised 130 million before our listing, we're very proud of that. Uh, our stock is, uh, you know, performing really well after our, our um, uh, public listing as of October 10th mm -hmm. um, and we're already reaching a 1.1 billion dollars in market cap so we're really really excited to just bring this technology to market as fast as possible. Yeah look I suppose you chose a great time because nuclear is hot right now particularly in the minds of investors but it has also been seen very much as a bit of a speculative trade I mean when you look across the space um, there are a, a lot of other sort of pure plays I mean the first that sort of comes to mind is Oclo for instance I mean what, what sort of sets you apart here I mean yeah. you know certainly from the physical side of it with your reactors, I've noticed that it almost looks like a box, like a small house. So right. optically, it, it's very different. Yeah, not only optical, but uh, there is some ma major differentiator. First of all, we, we finished our design last October 2024. So we start from a very solid background that allow us to speed up really the licensing process, which is quite unique in this, in this area. And the other aspect, fundamental aspect, is that all our component and material that we use in our reactor have been used in the nuclear industry since 60 years, and in particular the fuel. This is completely uh, a different approach uh, that allows us to, to go to directly to the commercialization in very sh short time. And as I was saying before, our goal since the beginning was to try to reduce the mismatch between the timeline of the investment and the timeline of the return of this investment from, from the investor, reducing the uh, period of licensing and reducing the, the risk of the construction using an existing supply chain. And the same supply chain that we have now identified is such that will allow us not only to build the first of a kind, and as Giordano say, we have now the money to do it, but also to look towards the commercialization with all the supply chain already existing and with the possibility to build up to 400 reactors by 2028. So that's a big difference in, in our technology respect maybe to the market. Okay, and Giordano, you obviously mentioned the timing and that AI has been very much a tailwind, but it's also received, no doubt, some government support, uh, very much a more sort of favorable environment right now as far as domestic policy is concerned. What are you seeing on that front for this industry? 
Uh, we're very thrilled about what the administration has been doing so far. Uh, there's been a lot of deregulation processes. There's a lot of uh, executive orders coming in to support the, the whole sector, the SMR industry. Even though we are a micromodular nuclear reactor, which is slightly different in terms of cost, it's, it's much more efficient in terms of that, uh, safer and so forth. Mm. Um, but we're definitely seeing, in terms of the US NRC, uh, shortened times for reviews, uh, which is, again, very exciting to bring the commercialization to 2028 construction permit 2027 and operational license in 2027 as well and we're taking advantage of those uh, propulsions right that we're getting on uh, on the political side um, one important thing to factor is uh, also the executive orders that uh, a lot of the other players in the industry are taking part of and uh, that revolves around the DOE we decided as a company not to pursue uh, those aspects, not because we don't believe in them, but simply because our design, as Alessandro explained, is completed. So as of October 2024, our R&D is done. So those programs, which are very important for the R&D developments, uh, were not really of use to us, but we were exploring uh, federal angles uh, with the DOD, with the DOE, uh, but more on the commercialization uh, aspect, yeah. uh, because our technology is tangible and can actually be built today. Yeah, I just want to touch on that. Obviously, uh, you mentioned that commercialization aspect of it, uh, the fact that you don't make revenue yet. At what point do you anticipate to, and then also the licensing from the US government for your particular product as well? Yeah, licensing is fundamental uh, in all uh, aspects of the nuclear technology, and we strongly believe that uh, our our journey with USNRC is um, is very robust. Mm -hmm. uh, since we started, not only we were able to proceed following our roadmap, but we were able also to anticipate some of the steps. Thanks also to the current reduction from 18 to 12 months of the review process. Uh, this will help definitely to speed up the, the, the licensing, not only for the first of a kind, because we are going to apply even from, uh, from next year, from the first quarter of next year for the operating license, which is also quite unique because everybody is, is uh, focused on the construction permit. Starting from next, next year, we will do the operating license. And this is just because, again, our background is very solid. We already developed the design and we can do that. So uh, we strongly believe that also the, the, the aspects with the USNRC, the licensing with USNRC is fundamental because it will allow us to also get advantage whenever we move out from US, from the commercialization of US, and we look outside of US. USNRC is always a reference or regulator all around the world, and this will be definitely an aspect that we want to leverage uh, also for the commercialization of our solo outside of US. Okay. Alessandro Giordano, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining Thank us here so on the floor. Like, yes. Look forward to doing it again very, very soon. Anytime. Appreciate it. All right. That was the co-founder and CEO and also partner, chief business development officer and investor relations over at Terra Innovate.